It was a big moment for the San Jose Sharks as they honored Joe Thornton. J.D. Young of Locked On Sharks is here to talk about that and what it will take for the Sharks to make a little more progress on the ice. All that and more on today's Locked On NHL podcast. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Gil Martin here and welcome everybody to the Monday edition of the Locked On NHL Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everyone who makes Locked On NHL your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you get new episodes as soon as they drop. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You could start the season with a big return on FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win that first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. It is my pleasure to welcome back to the show the host of Locked On Sharks, J.D. Young, and an eventful weekend in San Jose. Joe Thornton, honored by the Sharks over the weekend. And, uh, J.D., what, what did Joe Thornton mean to this organization and to the fans in San Jose? Yeah, I mean, you look at Joe Thornton, and I know the Sharks before they had Joe Thornton. They had some success and some playoff runs, but the moment the Sharks got Joe Thornton, you can look from then on basically till the moment he left. Uh, this team was basically a legitimate cup contender every year, and they did everything but win the Stanley Cup, unfortunately, as uh, every Sharks fan knows. But he legitimized, like, Owen Nolan was like the Sharks' first superstar. Joe Thornton brought this team into a new kind of era of prosperity and, uh, you know, years of winning. And, you know, you have a President's Cup. You have just, like, one of the most winning franchises in uh, that time period. Uh, And Joe Thornton was the center of it. He was a legitimate superstar, MVP. um, And he, again, just made San Jose hockey what we kind of knew until basically covid uh, where this team was you're going to be a, a playoff team every year. They're going to be contention to win. Uh, and they're going to do everything they can to try to win a Stanley Cup and just unfortunately fell short. What is to you the one single memory that stands out most about Joe Thornton? Uh, we'll keep this one PG because, I mean, of course, there's the famous Joe Thornton quote, which I think most people kind of go to uh, with, with Tomas Hurdle's four goals, et cetera, et cetera. Go look it up, kids, if you don't know. Uh, for me, well, though, I think – Or don't, yeah. Uh, for me, though, I think the there's two moments. One is the overtime winner against the Kings with the jumbo slide, and especially because the Kings had – it was – that rivalry is really starting to get going, and the Shark kind of struggled against the Kings, and they finally beat the Kings and kind of move on, and you – like, you see Joe, like Joe Thornton just – it all releases, and he just, you know, skates to the middle – Thornton, who had been under you know a lot of criticism for his playoff performances, comes up big right there, scores the series clincher. Sharks move on that one, and then of course the famous uh, kind of the same thing with the Red Wings, where the Red Wings were in their prime late, um, you know, two thousand eight, two thousand nine, two thousand ten. The Sharks could never get past them. Um, Joe Thornton to Patrick Marleau, where basically Thornton shoots the puck off of Marleau's stick on a two on one. For the goal, uh, and I think that a lot of Sharks fans, especially with Thornton and Marlow, so heavily connected from their draft, their careers, and even now with their both of their numbers retired, um, that moment and they score and they both kind of embrace after that. Those are the two moments, uh, the clean moments that we can talk about with Joe Thornton and kind of what he means and, and kind of like his legacy for San Jose. Do you think he is the greatest player in franchise history? Yeah, uh, you, I know Patrick Marlowe is forever Mr. Shark, and you can make an argument for Owen Nolan, who was the first superstar and kind of helped legitimize the franchise. But you look at, at Joe Thornton and his accomplishments, I mean, they got he got there. He was the M- instantly became the MVP. You know, he made Jonathan Chichu a Rock of Richard winner. Like, he elevated this franchise. Um you know, holds so many records and, and like everything kind of centered around Joe Thornton, what he did and what he meant to this franchise. And even if you go back to like um, 
the Sharks last kind of cup run when they lost in the Western Conference Finals. Uh, he's like 40 years old and putting up a point per game on the third line. Uh, if you're making Marcus Sorensen and Kevin LeBanc like legitimate players, I think like that, that's a huge uh, kind of feather in your cap. But uh, yeah, I, it's it, for me, it's pretty easy. It's Joe Thornton, uh, who's the best, the greatest Sharks player, just because uh, he was either the best player on his team for a good chunk of it, or he was one of the most important pieces to the Sharks, and especially at the end of his career when some of the other guys like Pavelski and Hurdle and some of these other guys kind of took the forefront. Uh, Thornton, you know, on legit, you know, arguably the best third line of the in the NHL at the time, like he was still an important cog to what they were doing and to their success. So, uh, yeah, Joe Thornton, he's pretty good. <laughs> Now, of course, the ceremony was great. They did a really good job. And then they go out, take a one nothing lead, take a 2-1 to one lead, and blow the game. Uh, yes. Talk to me about what happened in that game and why you think it might actually be a teachable moment. Yeah, for the Sharks, I mean, this was a game where they actually kind of controlled the pace. And something that they're not used to this team is... Uh, a lot of their wins this year have been of the comeback variety. They have the most goals in the NHL when it comes uh, to, you know, goalie pulled, extra man, like down. Uh, this is a team that they're going to fight to the very end. Young teams, they can do that, right? But as you kind of grow and learn, one of the biggest things is, okay, how do you come back in games to how do you kind of control and put teams away? And I think that's kind of the next uh step for this team as they continue their their rebuild but um this is a team that had a lot of opportunities especially in the second period uh, again kind of like i said mentioned controlling pace of play they had five power play opportunities including the three on five and weren't able to convert and you wonder if this team gets up three to one if they're maybe able to make it the four to one and really kind of put the the kibosh on the sabers who weren't playing very well it's until kind of the end of the second beginning of the third where they made their push um, if the Sharks were able to hold a two-goal lead going into the third period instead of a one-goal lead, if we're talking about a Sharks win in this. And I, I think that's a, a teachable moment, and it's going to be something this team is going to have to learn, as all teams do as they go through their rebuild process, is, okay, how do we? How do you start to learn to win? How do you start to kind of put teams away? And that's what good and great teams do is they win. Instead of winning 2-1, to one, they win 4-1 to one because they just kind of suffocate the life out of a team. Got to ask about Macklin Celebrini. Where is he at? I know it's four goals, seven points in 11 games, but how is he looking and what are you seeing from him? Uh, any improvement that we can talk about? Uh, Celebrini's great. Uh, I would highly recommend getting one. He's really great. No, uh, what this young man is doing already in the NHL is mind-boggling at times. Uh, the way he plays in all three zones, right? Because you know most kids when they come in, like defense is, is – one of the things they need to focus on and defense is still an area that he needs to improve, but the way as an, again, 18 year old kid, the way he wins board battles, uh, the way he's able to read plays, uh, his ability to transition from the defensive zone to the offensive zone. It's not like any other player I've really covered with the sharks. Um, basically if he has the puck in his own zone, it's probably it's nine out of 10 times is going to end up successively in the offensive zone. He's just that good. Um, his ability to scan the ice and know where players are, uh, an insanely wicked shot, especially for, again, an 18-year-old kid who's still uh, trying to, you know, build up his strength and, and stuff. Um, he's an absolute joy. It makes the Sharks so much fun to watch every night. And he, The Sharks ask a lot of him. Like, he has a lot already as the number one C on the team. Like, he, he does a lot for this team, but he has kind of answered a lot of questions Get a big overtime game winner against Detroit on Monday night. Um, almost did it again. Uh, you almost had two overtime winners this week. Like, he's absolute joy. You should get one, Gil. Get yourself a nice, fun first overall pick. They're great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'd probably <laughs> trade it away, but that's a different story for a different podcast. So, J JD, uh, why don't you tell our viewers and our listeners where they could find your podcast and where they could find you on social media? Of course, you can find Locked On Sharks wherever you get podcasts and watch on YouTube as well. Uh, you can follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram at Locked On Sharks. You can follow me on Twitter at Mike Fryhole. And come back tomorrow. Seth and I are doing Western Conference stuff here on Locked On NHL. We always have a good time. Yes, you do. And I'm looking forward to seeing that. JD, thank you so much. 
Thanks, Gil. Today's episode is brought to you by your friends at FanDuel. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more all on the same page where you place your bets. And hockey fans, use your knowledge of your favorite team and the game of hockey to get exciting bets on FanDuel as well. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com, FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. 